Okay, now we have a pre-recorded presentation from the Honourable Lefoko Moagi, who's the Minister for Mineral Resources, Green Technology and Energy Security for the Republic of Botswana. Director of Ceremonies, Executive Chairman of Paid Debt Media, Mr. Bill Reaper, dignitaries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, even the fourth estate, a very good morning to you or good afternoon in whichever other parts of the world you are. It is an honor and privilege for me to address delegates at the Africa Down Under Mining Conference. I am aware that this is the 19th edition of the conference and would like to commend the organizers for reaching this milestone. I am grateful of the fact that Botswana, through the Ministry of Mineral Resources, Green Technology and Energy Security, has been a part of this conference for at least the last 10 years now. We recognize that the Africa Down Under Conference affords us the opportunity to meet with mining officials and investors whose companies do business across the African continent, including my own country, Botswana. Botswana is host to a number of exploration and mining companies that originate from Australia. We are happy to continue doing business with such Australian companies and are inviting more to invest in our country. We offer a conducive environment for mining business and have a sound mining industry due to a number of factors that I would now like to articulate as follows. Our tax rate is competitive at a minimum 22% corporate tax. Royalties are 10% for diamonds, 5% for other precious metals, and 3% for the rest of the base metals and other minerals. Security of tenure for mineral deposits that you discover is assured, immediate 100% write-off of your capital spend, and we allow for repatriation of profits. We believe that these factors and many others, such as respect for the rule of law, transparent administration, and efficient services will encourage investors to consider Botswana favorably when making investment decisions. Some of the companies that have been granted mining license in Botswana recently are Kwemakau Copper Mining, and most recently is the Sunfire Resources subsidiary, Sukuru Metals, for their copper deposit in Hansi. Other companies that are at advanced exploration stages include the Mount Burgess, uh, which is uh, prospecting for base metals in the northwest of the country, Africa Energy Resources, which is prospecting for coal in the central uh, district, and ACAP Resources doing uranium in the central uh, district uh, of Botswana. The COVID-19 global pandemic has, uh, has hampered mining industry throughout 2020, and it continues to do so in 2021, though we have uh, found or at least seen uh, aspects of recovery in most parts of the mining industry. The pandemic obviously poses challenges and uncertainty to the industry, and therefore has seen a drastic drop in raising funds for mineral prospecting and raising capital for mineral development projects across the world. These funding challenges are not only limited to the minerals industry, but of course they cut across all economic activities. We have observed logistical challenges for transporting minerals to markets as a result of travel restrictions and consequent closure of ports and borders. In some instances, the markets of some minerals, particularly luxury goods like diamonds, shut down almost completely as most retail stores across the world were affected by the pandemic during 2020, resulting in great losses for the miners and other players in the value chain. Nevertheless, there are unlimited opportunities for investment in the mineral sector in Botswana particularly in exploration of minerals, mining and beneficiation. Opportunities for mining and beneficiation of soda ash, coal, base metals have been identified. There are also pro prospective prospects for energy minerals, including coal bed methane and uranium. I therefore encourage potential investors to consider exploration and mining of this non-diamond uh, minerals 
across the country. In an effort to encourage prospecting and mining of non-diamond minerals, the government of Botswana has intensified efforts to digitize and make geoscience information readily available to local and international potential investors. The mineral sector is one of the important drivers of our economy and the strong dominance of diamond mining puts the company at risk due to the high exposure of our revenues to market fluctuations and declining profitability as operational costs get higher with the deepening of mines. Yeah, most of the mines are now going underground. Global pandemics such as COVID-19 have also highlighted the pitfalls of over-reliance on one mineral. This situation has more than ever shown us the need to urgently diversify the mineral portfolio of the country away from diamonds. Government has drawn up a minerals policy to guide development and growth of the mineral sector in Botswana. The key objectives of the policy, including maximization of economic benefits to the nation while enabling private investors to earn competitive returns. Creation of a competitive environment to stimulate private sector investment in minerals development. Improved linkages with the wider economy and generation of employment opportunities for locals. Even recently, I've been to parliament, the Botswana parliament, whereby uh, I was making amendment to some of the legislation that go with the minerals policy, the likes of the diamond cutting amendment bill and the precious and semi-precious stones uh, protection bill. These are meant to enhance uh, accessibility uh, by uh, investors as well as uh, ease of doing business in terms of these. The policy, the minerals policy that is, aims to maximize economic benefits and to facilitate private sector involvement in minerals development. It will also positively contribute in the review of our mining legislation, taking into account current developments and emerging issues to ensure that our mining laws are in accordance with international best practice. Tough times like these call for even greater collaboration between industry players to enable the rebuilding, growth, and sustainability of the industry. Events such as this one offer us an opportunity to share what we are doing in Botswana to ensure growth and sustainability of the mining industry and highlight opportunities that are available for you to seize and partner with Botswana, that is people from Botswana, to develop the country's mineral resources. Despite the negative impact of COVID-19 on the mining industry, there are positive developments in the country, which shows that investor confidence is still high in Botswana. A number of mining companies are undertaking expansion projects, whilst others are doing greenfield and brownfield exploration. Exploration for copper and silver deposits has, has intensified in the Northwest part of Botswana and the growth of the mineral sector in Botswana is expected from these. Good exciting discoveries have been made in the Kalahari Copper Belt, where there are several advanced exploration projects and some sites have recently been granted mining licenses for copper and silver. And I must reiterate that uh, the government of Botswana intent on luring investors has also advanced infrastructure developments within these jurisdictions. We recently commissioned a multi-billion pula uh, Northwest transmission line to ensure that the mines in those areas are facilitated uh, by access power so that they can do their processing and all the other activities without any hampering uh, due to power uh, infrastructure. In an effort to facilitate diversification further, Botswana's Minerals Portfolio, Botswana Geoscience Institute is undertaking an assessment of mafic, ultramafic, and granitic complexes to map and identify mineral occurrences to promote prospecting in Botswana. The project will highlight areas of high mineral potential, including base metals, rare earth metals, precious metals, 
and platinum group metals. The target follow-up will be undertaken by the private sector after completion of the initial phase. The scope of the project includes interpretation of existing aeromagnetic data together with other geoscience data to produce geological, geophysical, hydrogeological, and mineral potential maps. Updating of the national geogra geographical and geological map and the development of geological databases. The information collected from the project will be made available to investors. A project to install a mining cadastral system for the management of mineral concessions that include both prospecting licenses and mining licenses has commenced and is anticipated to be completed by January 2022. As I conclude my speech, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to urge all investors attending this mining forum to consider Botswana as their mining investment destination for they will surely find the country ready to receive them. Our policies are designed to benefit the investor as well as the people of Botswana. I thank you for your kind attention. Please stay safe and observe all COVID-19 protocols as given by health authorities. I thank you.